Is John Jones ducking Sergei Pavlovich? Is he ducking Tom Aspinall? The answer is yes, absolutely. John Jones is without a doubt ducking these guys. Is he afraid of them? Is he like worried that he wouldn't be able to beat them? I mean, no, he's not scared. Is he worried that he wouldn't be able to beat them? Kinda. I mean, this is the thing, guys. John Jones went on a podcast yesterday and said, listen, I don't want to fight these young up-and-comers. They're beasts. These guys are finishing everyone in the first round. Sergey Pavlovich is literally one of the hungriest men that ever walked the face of the earth. He doesn't give a fuck about anything other than training and fighting. And, of course, Tom Aspinall is a freak of nature as well. He has incredible grappling. He's fast as hell. And he's got KO power on top of that. Jones doesn't want to be fighting these guys because, number one, he went out here and he told us they're not big names. Stipe Miocic is looked at as the heavyweight GOAT. That is somebody that people are a little bit more familiar with. And I made a I made a promise to myself that because I can, that I will. And um, I'll always put my best foot forward to protect, you know, this great legacy that I have. And I'm never coming back down. I have a lot to talk about. My mind's just going a million miles per hour at this point. But let me just get this out of the way. Jones is smart. He's going to try to end his career on top. This is what he's talked about for the last 10 years, for goodness sakes. Jones is obsessed with his legacy. He mentions it in every single one of his interviews. That's why he's always, when he's shit-talking his opponent, he's saying, you're just a pawn in this game. You're just a piece of the puzzle. You're just a, a check on my resume. That's what it is for Jones. If he beats Stipe Miocic, it looks great on paper. Imagine 20 years from now, we have a guy that's getting into MMA. He's watching for the first time. It's like, what, 2043? And all of a sudden, he's looking at the resume of John Jones. Bro, was this guy really that good? Like, who is this? Anthony Smith? You talk about Anthony Smith? Like, that's an overrated win. Dinosaur Anthony Smith? They're going to be calling some of these wins like plumbers. But then they'll look at Stipe, and they'll say, holy shit. He did beat Stipe, and he subbed him in the first round. Holy fuck. And Stipe had only just lost one fight before that to Francis Ngannou. And it's like, anyone would lose to Francis at the time, right? That's not a big deal. You got KO'd by Francis. That happens. If he loses to Pavlovich... Unless Pavlovich goes on to become the fucking goat at heavyweight, which he actually kind of has a chance to do it because he's such a freak. Um, if he loses to Tom Aspinall, people might just say, if those guys don't then become the goat of that division, people might say, fuck, dude, he was overrated, bro. He just needed to fight the new generation. His, his skills were outdated at the time. He's like a, a 90s plumber, NBA 90s plumber. You know what I mean? That's what they'll be saying. But there is one thing that John Jones does say that I think is a little bit silly. And to be honest, it's kind of a cop out. I wish he were to just tell us that, listen, I don't want to fight these young up and comers. They're too dangerous. They're too risky. I don't want to risk my legacy. I've proved enough. How many goddamn title wins do I need to have before you guys get it through your heads that I'm the numero uno? But he says, like, Oh, uh, you know, Stipe's a big draw. Stipe's a guy. It's a household name. People know Stipe. I want the big money fights. I want the big names. Stipe, as I said, is going to look great on John Jones's resume. 100% it's going to look great on there because it's the heavyweight goat. 20 years from now, people aren't really going to have the same kind of context that we do knowing that Stipe's an old man. They'll just view him as a really solid heavyweight win. But... This idea that Stipe is more like mainstream and it's going to be a bigger draw, like, bro, I can assure you on this, nobody knows who Stipe Miocic is outside of hardcore MMA fans. That's a goddamn fact, okay? Nobody knows who Stipe is, all right? It's not like he's that much of a bigger name than Sergei Pavlovich and Tom Aspinall, especially now that the sport is even bigger and new MMA fans know who Tom Aspinall is. New MMA fans know who Sergei Pavlovich is. Don't get me wrong. Stipe's had some big fights. The first Francis Ngannou fight in 2018 that the UFC was trying to push heavily. They were really putting all their eggs in that Francis Ngannou promotion. And of course, the fights with DC the rematch with Ngannou, you know what I mean? Like, these were big fights, but it's not like Stipe's a household name. He's not Mike Tyson. I know he's like the heavyweight goat, but come on. Are we really going to act like the average Joe schmuck on the street knows who the fuck Stipe is? That's just not the case. But as I get older, I have to look at it as a business and not just speak out of pride. If the hardcore fans know who these guys are, that's great. But at the end of the day, I need I need to fight people that the mainstream public is going to be excited about. I mean, Jones would have you convinced that this is like Joe Frazier, that this is uh, Manny Pacquiao or, or Floyd Mayweather. Like, bro, it ain't Joe Frazier. It's not Mike Tyson. It's not Muhammad Ali. 
It's the UFC guy that flew under the radar even when he was a champion and a multiple-time defending champion because Dana White didn't want to promote him. I understand what you, some of you guys are thinking right now. What are you talking about? It's the heavyweight goat. I don't care about legacy. Think about outside of the hardcore MMA fan niche. Outside of that bubble, Stipe is like relatively unknown, and uh, people have only really seen him on a couple of Francis Ngannou lawn chair folding moments where Francis folded them up like a lawn chair. Or Stipe getting KO'd by DC. Or casual fans checking the UFC's Instagram post in 2018 on a Sunday to see if Francis Ngannou got a highlight real KO, only to find that Stipe Miocic got his hand raised with a nice stubborn victory and that immigrant mentality, okay? These are what the casual fans are getting exposed to. For the most part, no one really cares about Stipe that much outside of us. But listen, Jones is smart. He's not scared of these guys. He's getting out on top. It's something that he could leverage for business purposes. You want to leave the UFC, you know, and, and use that undefeated status to have business opportunities, to have sponsorships and endorsements. And it's already hard enough for John Jones to get these sponsorships and endorsements because he's completely stained his legacy outside of the cage with all the horrible shit that he's done. John Jones is a terrible person. Um, and I know he has the CARE Project. That is something that is big. Now, if you guys don't understand what the CARE Project is, Jones goes out and hands out hand-me-downs at the local Albuquerque, New Mexico Walmart, which is, that's a pretty big deal. People don't really bring that up enough. But listen, Jones is still a rotten egg, okay? Let's just get that out of the way. He's still a rotten egg. It's not like he can just go out there and get a job at the, the ESPN desk with Stephen A. Smith. They don't want him in their sight, all right? No one wants to be associated with John Jones. And for a good reason. And so the only thing he has is that GOAT status. And he wants to keep that. And he wants to have the, the casual fans that are just getting into the sport in 2043 that will go on to become hardcore fans. And hardcore fans are going to be looking at resumes. He wants them to look at his resume and have the Stipe Miocic win on paper. And also, it's just fucking clear as day, bro. Pavlovich is smack dab in the middle of his prime. Maybe not even in his prime. He's about to be in his prime. He can knock you out. If he tags you with one shot, you're on Crip Street. The next thing you know, you're done. It doesn't matter how skilled you are when you get cracked by Pavlovich. The same thing is true for Tom Aspinall. Steve Miocic, you know, that's like your grandfather that's propped up in front of the TV that doesn't even know how to walk, that doesn't even really know what to think, and he's just propped up in front of the TV watching soccer. You know what I mean? And you go and have an awkward conversation with him. He doesn't really speak eloquently. That's Stipe. It's a guy that's a little bit more enticing for John Jones. It's like a winnable fight. He's not scared. Um, we shouldn't be shitting on John Jones. At the end of the day, there's always going to be a young up-and-comer that people are going to say, yeah, but he's not going to be this guy. Like, that's just the nature of the sport, okay? And now it's time to get to the whole backup thing. I can't stand the backup fighter hype. People get so excited about backup fighters. Like, why? When is the last time we've ever seen a backup fighter actually fill in for a championship fight? It literally never happens. You know what I mean? Can you give me an example? I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. Ally Aquinta, I mean, that guy wasn't really a backup fighter. They just phoned him up and he was in Long Island. He was a couple of blocks away and he was ready to show up the next day regardless. And he's a beast, so he went on the weight cut for Habib. But at the end of the day, guys, the only time in which it would mean something, okay, is if Steve A were to pull out on like the second or third week of September and John Jones has, you know, a good two months left to prepare for the fight and maybe the UFC can toss him a big bag and incentivize him to fight Pavlovich. That's when it would mean something. But when we actually get to fight week or the week before that, I'll tell you this. I know John Jones by now. I, I know what is most important to him. He is not going to be fighting Sergei Pavlovich if Stipe pulls out within two weeks before the fight. There's just no fucking way he'll fight him. He's not going to take the risk. He's not about it. And he actually mentioned this the last time when Pavlovich was weighing in to be the backup for Gon and Jones. Jones was saying, I'm not fighting this guy if Cyril Gon pulls out. I'm not prepared. I'm not doing it. So don't expect Sergei Pavlovich and John Jones to be fighting unless Stipe were to pull out in September. All right. John Jones is not going to want to risk it. Even three weeks, if, if Stipe pulls out three weeks before the fight, Jones is not going to have enough time to get ready for Pavlovich. And because it's not ideal circumstances and because he doesn't want to take a risk with the resume, he's not going to take that fight. Stipe, on the other hand, if Jones were to pull out where, where it's like, dude, when's the last time Jones has really pulled out like that? Like when Jones has gotten kicked off of a card, it's been because he popped. You know what I mean? It's been because he's done some wild shit on the side. 
but I don't see him just having a, a everyday injury and pulling out of the card. But if he were to pull out, I could see Stipe and Pavlovich fighting, but it wouldn't be for a belt. The UFC wouldn't do that. They like their precious John Jones. They want John Jones to always have the belt. So they're not going to do that. Um, and it'd be weird to see Stipe fighting Pavlovich for the vacant belt. And I don't even like that fight. I think that Pavlovich would absolutely butcher him. But yeah, that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time. I'm going to show you how to spice it up in the kitchen. We're rocking with butter chicken. This ought to put on some mass. We're rocking with some ginger garlic paste, red chili pepper, salt. And we're going to mix that up, toss it on a pan with some ghee, stir that up. And right before it's done, put it aside. We're going to use the same pan, some tomatoes, grass-fed butter, onions, right? Stir that up. Let it simmer. We're going to add some brown sugar, garam masala powder, a handful of cashews, and a little more red chili powder. Blend that shit up in a blender. We're going to put some more butter on the pan. Pour that blended sauce up. Add some heavy cream. Put the chicken back in. Stir that up. And you got yourself one of the most gorgeous, delicious meals you could ever imagine. This will put on some size. For more meals like this, guys, check out my Real Food Cookbook.